This is a direct message to Kyle Bush. Hey, Kyle, how's it going? Um, you may know me as the guy who says that every single one of your Xfinity wins uh, mean absolutely nothing. You may recognize me as the one who said that um, you deserve to break your leg in 2015. Um, you may recognize me as all of these things, but listen to me now. Listen to me now as as were as if it were I were an an old friend of yours who is giving you expert advice and ha- definitely has no personal um vendetta in the situation has no personal uh stake if you will you see you have done it all you have won two championships one of which was full of shit, but for the sake of the argument, let's just say two. Not very many drivers have won two championships, especially with this god-awful, wretched joke of a chase format. The fact that you managed to get one was incredible. But two? The, may the odds ever be in your favor, Kyle? That is lucky, if I, if I do say so myself. So, you have, what is it, 60 career wins? That's a fair chunk. That's a fair chunk of change. 60 real race wins. That is more than many drivers can say. You, you And you arguably could consider yourself to be definitely the greatest driver of the 2010s decade. From 2010 to 2019, you even capped off 2019 with the championship. And all your wins coming in that span, most of those wins coming in that span, you are a decorated uh, car owner. You've got a truck series championship with an amazing driver in Eric Jones. Good stuff. You have another truck championship waiting in the wings this year with Chandler Smith. You have done it all. You have done so much. In stock car racing. You have done. You have accomplished more than just about anyone could imagine. And you know what? And you know what? The biggest accomplishment of all is that you got more championships than your brother. And wins for that matter. But, you know, you got like twice as many wins as Kurt. Like, come on, man. There's the bragging rights. What more do you have to accomplish? What more do you have going for you? In an era where Toyota is completely full of shit and has absolutely no pace whatsoever because the fucking cars are designed by Chevy. Imagine the fucking odds that they're doing so fucking good this year. Can you fucking believe this turn of events? In an era where Toyota is full of shit, okay, and you have yourself said that you do not enjoy driving these cars, you have not enjoyed driving these cars, you have had... In your own words, many sleepless nights. I'm sure a lot of that is due to the fact that you don't know what's going to happen next week. You don't know how your car is going to perform. You have had wins taken from you. You have had opportunities at success just removed outright. You have had so many issues this year. So many things out of your hands. And at what point do you realize that you have nothing left to prove? You have nothing left to prove. Let's say for the sake of the argument that your Xfinity wins matter. No one's ever going to get to 100. Especially considering there's still leeches. There remains leeches. Despite you retiring from Xfinity, which... Actually surprised that he kept his word on that one. Um, We'll see what happens next year. But, you know... You've got fucking, like, 55 truck whims. whoop de fucking do No one besides you cares about this, okay? No one. But even then, the most wins ever in Xfinity, the most wins ever in trucks, 60 career wins in the most competitive era of NASCAR, two championships, one that's actually meaning something, what more do you have to prove to people? What is, what's left? From twenty, from 2015 to 2019, you were untouchable by anyone besides Truex. You had, you were in the top five, at least, 
every race, unless there was a mechanical issue, rare as they may be, all right? What do you have to prove? Kyle, you are still young. What are you, 36? Good Lord. You have plenty of steam left in you. But let's be realistic, especially in the state that Toyota's in right now. You are not going to be getting 10 wins every year like you used to. You're going to get a few here and there. Let us, let's not forget, let's not forget the fact that you have not won a race on pace since 2019 Homestead. He hasn't. It hasn't happened. Texas 2020, it was thanks to um, Truex's pit crew being terrible and him shutting the fucking car off on the backstretch at one point. And Truex was faster at the end of that race, and the package was dog shit, and he couldn't get around him. 2021, where did Bush win? I don't even fucking remember where Bush won in 2021. He won at Kansas. That race was Larson's. And the Bristol Dirt Race, amazing as that was, thanks, all hail, all praise to Chase Briscoe for that race. All thanks, all glory. Glory to Chase. Glory to the man. Glory to the 14 car. But... We all know you should not have won that race. He has not won a race on pace since 2020. He is not, and in the truck series, he got his his doors absolutely blown off all season. The only reason that he did anything, he the only reason he won in the truck series is because Chandler Smith is incapable of driving road courses. And um Carson fucking Horsevar, Horsevar, right at the peak of like his pace broke his goddamn leg at the most opportune time. That race was his because he decided to fucking get the pole with a broken leg. Imagine if he was actually at a hundred percent. Good Lord. Kyle, you're on your way out. There's just no other, there's just new, no two ways about it. My friend, you are on your way out. The Kyle Bush experience is coming to an end. It's, time to admit when you're done okay you still you have won this year you have a win this year all right leave while you're on top don't be like jimmy johnson don't be like jimmy johnson except in this facet go to indycar kyle oh my god dude you're on your way out in the stock cars but you are still consistently the fastest car at Gibbs every week. Even though you're on your way out of the, of the team, there's no way he's coming back. Ty Gibbs is going to the 18. I've been saying this since last year. You're done at Gibbs. Why not take this opportunity to expand? You are still an amazing driver. You are still probably the greatest driver in America besides Scott Dixon. You are probably, and you could fucking change that fact. You could change that. You could become the greatest driver in America if you go to the 10 car. And I'm not talking about Stuart Haas. Chip Ganassi Racing, one of the top teams, definitely better than Andretti this season. I can tell you that much. Ganassi, the second best team in IndyCar, because he's not going to Penske, and I wouldn't want him to anyway. Chip Ganassi Racing has an opening. You could slot yourself into this car, the defending champion's car, mind you. So it's not like you're going to some, you know, bumfuck Dale Coyne car or something, you know. No, you're going into championship-level equipment. Okay? All right? You got a championship level team with a championship level teammate in Scott Diction and an absolute fucking clown show but money factory in the other Ganassi car. But this is your opportunity, Kyle. This is your opportunity to definitively prove that you're better than Jimmy Johnson. I don't know why you wouldn't want to take up this opportunity. This is the this is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's just it's right there in front of you, Kyle. You can prove to everyone that you are better than Jimmy Johnson. If you leave while you're ahead, quit while you're ahead 
You have the world in your hands, Kyle. And you're still young. You got time to prove yourself. And there's not much you have to prove. You were already a great road course driver. You're still the best road course driver at JGR right now. <laughs> you are. And forget about the ovals, dude. You own those too. You are great at everything, dude. However, you're on the way out. Gibbs is done with you because he has his own grandson to worry about. And you have no money. However, you have enough money. Okay? And you will draw attention. Do you have any idea what kind of nonsense that Jimmy Johnson does? Jimmy Johnson isn't even good in any car. And you look at all the money he brings. So much money. Just by existing in IndyCar. It's all NBC ever talks about. You'd think he was the only driver in the field for how much they talk about him. No one has gotten this much press for running in the bottom five of the field since Danica. And Kyle, you are actually good enough. You actually have the skill set to be good at road courses in IndyCar. You could, you could jump into an IndyCar today and perform. But think about it, Kyle. You're 36 or something. You're in that age range. You could be an IndyCar champion. You do not need to take too much time to develop the skill set. Robert Wickens walked into a car and should have won the fucking championship his rookie year if his fucking life wasn't almost taken from him. Okay? I'm still fucking mad that Wickens never got to have a career. But you, Kyle, 36 or something, okay? You could race in IndyCar for the next 10 years, maybe not 10 years, at a competitive level, but at least the next five, the next five minimum. You'd have five years. You'd have one year to figure out how to drive the cars and then four more to get a championship. <laughs> and Ganassi is always going to be a top team unless some crazy shit happens, Ganassi is always going to be a top team. They're always going to be right there in the championship picture. I think Dixon's going to steal another championship this year, if I'm fucking honest. I think he's coming. It's because fucking Portland's coming. God knows what's going to happen at Portland. I'm sure the entire, like, top, he's probably going to qualify like 11th. The entire top 10 is going to die in the first turn, and then boom, Dixon leads every lap from there on. I'm not, I wouldn't even fucking be surprised if that happened. Anyway, point that I'm trying to make is that you have time. You have time to change. You have time to move over to a series that you would benefit so much from. You, it's not just the fact that the series would benefit from, from you. You would benefit from the series because the cars are the, I, I don't know how the cars are driving right now. I really haven't been keeping up with IndyCar lately because motorsports as a whole makes me want to fucking shoot myself. But the cars, at least a few years ago, were you know, the best that they'd ever been. Like, the 2018 IndyCar series was so fucking good! I don't know how much they've changed since then, but, like, they have moved to low downforce, high horsepower. Okay? They're doing the opposite of what NASCAR has done for the last five years. They have put the controls in the hands of the drivers, which is exactly what Kyle Busch would need to have levels of success that we saw when the cars were in control of the drivers in 2016, 17, and 18. It's all there. All the pieces are there. Ganassi has an opening that he needs filled in the defending champion's car. And Kyle Busch needs something that will make him not want to kill himself every single week that he straps in a car. Okay? And don't forget that the IndyCar schedule is a bit more lax than the NASCAR schedule. You get more time to focus on your son and his future racing career. You get more time to devote yourself to that. And don't think I've forgotten about KBM because... This is the part where you leaving NASCAR benefits NASCAR because KBM's truck team can still exist if Bush moves over to the Honda IndyCar team that opens up an avenue for Honda to enter the truck series with Kyle Busch Motorsports. It's all right there. If Kyle Busch leaves, 
it could drag Honda. And if he goes specifically to Chip Ganassi Racing, it could drag Honda into NASCAR. So NASCAR gets an additional OEM, which is what they've been desperate for for the past 15 years. All of the pieces are there for the perfect amalgamation of everything. Kyle Busch gets to drive in a series that doesn't suck, and he actually gets to showcase his talents on a championship-level team, and he brings a new OEM into NASCAR. This is a symbiotic relationship. It's perfect. It's the perfect storm. It's absolutely perfect. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. It's so obvious, dude. It's so obvious. All you have to do, Kyle, is admit that you're done. Admit that NASCAR is too far gone for you to have any success in. Okay? Admit it. You can go to a different team. You could, go, if you find a Chevy, if Trackhouse wants to hire you, okay, maybe then you'll be able to win 10 races per season again. But they're not going to do that. You want to know why, Kyle? Because you don't bring enough money to them. You do not have sponsor. Mars is leaving. That's a lot of money that's leaving. But you do have money. You do have personal sponsors. And it costs a lot less to buy a ride in IndyCar than it does in NASCAR. I can guarantee you that. And I can also guarantee you that Chip Ganassi is going to be able to pay you way more than any of these other teams that you're going to have to pay them in order to drive for them. I can guarantee you that. So if money's what you need, there it is. There it is. It's called chip bucks. Chip bucks. I, I, I've coined the term. Chip Ganassi's fat stacks, chip bucks. All right? You can go and get your chip bucks, and you can go and get yourself a brand new mansion, and you can build a fucking racetrack in your backyard to help Brexton along. There you go. There's the fucking thing there. And like I said before, you'd be able to devote your time to furthering your son's career on all the extra off weeks that you're going to get, right? It's a much more lax schedule, as I said. And if you're able to coax Honda into bringing themselves into the truck series, you get to keep the truck team so that when Brexton turns fucking 15, he can run Bristol <laughs> in a Honda, in the Honda number 51, Rowdy Energy Honda. <sighs> Oh, and just imagine, just imagine what a rowdy energy livery or an IndyCar car would look like. It would just basically be a, it would be a Penske car, but it would be on, it would have the 10 on it. It would have a 10 because it's a 10 out of 10 idea, Kyle. Forget everything that I've ever said. Forget that I have wished for your down, I wished for your downfall all the way from about 2009 to at least 2019, all right? Forget that I completely rooted against you. C forget that I celebrated you breaking your leg in the Xfinity race because it meant that someone fucking else could win in the Xfinity series for a few months. Forget about all of these things. Kyle, man to man, man to man, this is what you need to do for the sake of yourself for the sake of auto racing in America as a whole, and for the sake of... That's about everything. But the, the point that I'm trying to make is that you have a golden opportunity to do something that no one has been able to do since Tony Stewart. And that is jump from one series, from a open wheel series to a stock car series, but do it the other way around and have success, because we all know that Kyle Busch is good enough. We all know that he still has the fire underneath him. We all know that he is capable of winning an IndyCar championship, maybe not a championship yet, but definitely a race. And we know that he wanted to do the Indy 500 a few years back before getting cock-blocked by Gibbs, I'm pretty sure. He's the one who decided against that. We all know that he's already expressed interest in driving Indy cars before. This is the opportunity. We may never get another chance like this to be able to see someone jump from stock cars to Indy car and have this kind of success. All right. We may never have this opportunity again. This is a, this is a perfect storm, as I have said multiple times. 
This could not be better timing. This could not be a more perfect scenario for Kyle to be able to jump into the defending champion's car and put some laps in. I don't know why anyone would want to see Bush go to fucking Stuart Haas or some dumbass shit like that, where he can play second fiddle to, to Kevin Harvick every week. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's it. Just be on the, be in, be in the 10 car. Yeah, that car that's done virtually fuck all since it came into existence. Or no, go into the 41 car. There we go. Jump into Cole Custer's car, because I'm sure that his dad won't have any, you know, anger towards you for taking over his son's car and potentially find ways to sabotage you behind the scenes because you took over his son's car. Oh yeah, that definitely won't happen. I mean, the colleague rumor is fun. Kyle Busch in the 16 for colleague that's a that's a funny meme but at the same time colleague ain't shit they expanded into the cup series and now they're worse than ever they can't do anything in xfinity besides aj allmendinger at road courses he was fast at ovals all of last year and he has only won road courses this year then you have the defending champion daniel hemrick who is forever a g and deserves to be where he is, but he's also done jack shit. And then you have Landon Castle, who's fucking Landon Castle. And then there's the Cup Series, which is a total meme. Why would Bush go to that? What, 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 there's potential there, but it won't be realized for another five years or so. You'll be f- over 40. You'll be over the hill by the time colleague's potential is realized, Kyle. Or... You could step into the Chip Ganassi 10 in the IndyCar series, which is the defending champion team, and immediately be contending for wins and championships. I like the idea of colleague. I'd be for it if I still gave a shit about the future of NASCAR, but no, I don't. I don't care what kind of loser ass rich cunt kid goes into the na- goes and replaces an actually good driver, huh? I don't give a fucking shit about that anymore. It doesn't fucking matter. NASCAR's fucking dead to me. It's full of shit. IndyCar has pissed me off a lot this year with their terrible race control decisions, but that can be fixed. Everything else is great. It's a full season championship. There's no arbitrary cautions in the middle of the fucking races. That's all cool. I don't even fucking mind the double points events. People are mad about the double points events. Do you realize how good you have it? Have you taken a look at NASCAR lately? Kyle, man to man. This is a golden opportunity that we could never see again. The best driver, one of the greatest of a generation, jumping over to IndyCar with the potential of having success by going into one of the top teams defending championship car. Not only all of that, but Kyle, you have the chance to definitively prove once and for all that you are better than Jimmy Johnson. I honestly don't know what else I can say besides take the risk. What do you have to lose? We will remember you as one of the greatest of the generation. You have 60 wins two championships, and a bunch of meaningless wins in Xfinity and trucks. No one can ever take that away from you. You have the greatest opportunity in years, in decades, potentially ever, in the history of American racing, American motorsports. Take it. Take it, Kyle. Think of the press alone, dude. You would generate so much press. You would generate so much money to put into your son's racing career. You have nothing to lose, Kyle. Nothing. Please, Kyle. Go to IndyCar. Go to the Chip Ganassi Racing 10. Or renumber it to the 54 if you want. I don't fucking know, dude. Just go to IndyCar. Please. You could change the fucking... You could, you could, you could change history. You could rewrite the history books. You could prove that you're better than both Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart, dude. You could do this. The the chance is there. It's here. Please take it. Thank you for watching. Bye.